Next on The Dialogue, we meet a comedian from Qatar who's lived in America and Ireland with a gift for bringing audiences together. On the count of three, I want to hear you make some noise. One, two, three. Hamad's life has been forged from a melting pot of different cultures. His work is infused with an intuitive grasp of different ways of life. I'm Hamad Alamari. I'm a comedian, presenter, producer, a father, a brother, a son. Hey, great to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Doing well, yeah. thanks for the invite. Well, thanks, for, um, thanks for joining us on the dialogue in this conspicuously Irish setting. I know. To be um, sure, to be sure. Yeah. And, and like culture, I mean, you've got a fascinating cultural background. So you're from Qatar, but you've got links to Ireland and the US as well. And you once said to me off camera that you kind of always feel a bit like a foreigner where, wherever you are. Yeah. Is yeah. that still the case and why is that? A hundred percent, yeah. I think uh, the Qataris in the, in the world that we were in was me and my brothers and sisters. And then same again in Ireland. So I was kind of schizophrenic almost, you know, you have friends who are Irish and then a community that were <laughs> Muslim and then you had the Arabs who were not from the Middle East area, but like North African Arabs, whoever you were with, you were never a part of. So being able to kind of say, oh, I'm Arab, and then you meet the Arabs and you're like, oh, you're not. And then <laughs> you come back here and it's like, oh, I'm Qatari, and they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, you know, I think it's made me interesting enough for us to have this conversation. <laughs> For that reason, we're very, yeah. we're very grateful. And then, and then 2011, you come back to Qatar. Yeah. And I think you said something like you had to learn what it meant to be you here. I think I'm still learning what it means to be me, isn't me today. Um, and it's a constant journey of learning. But back then, it was because of the different influences that I've taken in from everywhere. At the end of the day, I am a Qatari, and I identify as a Qatari, and this is my family, and this is where I'm from. So I had to relearn, and I was actively learning about my culture. So I would ask things like, what does this mean? What does that mean? Why do we behave like this? Why do we kiss noses? You know, like, what, does, what do all of these mean? And thankfully, I got answers, and then I was, there's a lot that I loved, so I shared. And, yeah, it led me to <laughs> where we are today. And you're a comedian, producer, presenter, e extraordinaire. But a lot, you know, is it from looking at life and looking at those idiosyncrasies and those things that affect all of us as part of a family or you know in an office? Is it is it is it that that, that you get your ideas from? In Qatar, it's, a, it's like 120 or 140 nationalities that live here. So there's always room for jokes. There's always room for understanding people and just kind of observing how they interact, you know? So most of my material comes from, you know, what I engage with and what I interact with and try and then spin off on that. Um, and even like recently after the World Cup finished, I took a very well-deserved holiday and then I went to Syria and Turkey for the earthquake just to kind of help out and volunteer. And even in those moments, there's some funny stories, you know, like, and you could see, like, there was people that I met that literally lost everything, not just possessions, family members, friends. And I don't know if it's shock, it might have been, but they're just, they're sitting down, we're having conversations and they're laughing. And, so, I don't know, I think I went to study the human body in university, anatomy, and hopefully go into medicine, and then I realized, no, I'm more of a, you know, social kind of interactions. What, 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 what is this really all about, you know? Oh my goodness, this is officially the biggest stage I've ever been on. It's the first time that the 
World Cup comes to the Arab world. So Hamad, millions of people will remember you as the host of the FIFA World Cup fan yeah. festivals. I remember being there, amazing atmosphere. In fact, I remember one night you getting down off stage and intervening to help my daughter <laughs> to snap her out of a preteen <laughs> pre tantrum. Um, other than sorting out shown family squabbles, yeah. what were your memories of that amazing time? Oh man, where do I even start? Like that's like a once in a lifetime thing. That's never gonna happen again. There was two million people there over a month and there was just a lot of love that was around in the air. Like, But yeah, there's so many memories. The, artists from around the world, engaging with so many people. I'll never get over how big it was. I mean, football really does bring a lot of people together. There was a general embrace of what it means to be, you know, in this region. And the Arab heritage and culture and identity was on show for everyone. And talking about identity, do you see yourself as some kind of cultural translator? That... <laughs> I think I never did, but I ended up Working on a show called Q-Tips, it wasn't any kind of how-to guide in a sense of, you know, it was more light-hearted three-minute videos of what Qataris do. This is called a misbah, also known as a sibha. Pens! Why are they so important and why do we always carry them? I'm going to be talking about arts and crafts, Qatari ones. And yeah, over time, I think I just became like the cultural bridge for, you know, like, oh, just get him in, he'll tell you. This is called a ghitra. This is called a gal. This is a thawb. And now you're back here yeah. in Qatar. Indeed. The successful World Cup's over. Yeah. What next for Hamad, for, for Qatar? What are your expectations of the, of the future, Hamad? I mean, if I, I don't know, I can't say much about Qatar, but like they've done, they've proven that they can host global events. They've proven that it's a good destination for people to come and visit. People want to come back, which is great, right? For me, I'm just working on my comedy, you know, in production, working on things like that. But my true love is stand up. So just working on making sure we tighten that up and hopefully someone will buy it. <laughs> Mate, I'm sure that'll happen. Thanks so much for joining us on the is it, is it too hot for a man hug? No, no, we could definitely. There's always room for a man hug. <laughs> oh, thanks so much for joining us on the show, man.